That was how she spent her first two weeks in the house, exploring the garden and the grounds. Her mother made her come back inside for dinner and for lunch. And Coraline had to make sure she dressed up warm before she went out, for it was a very cold summer that year. But go out she did, exploring every day until the day it rained, when Coraline had to stay inside. What should I do? Read a book, watch a video, play with your toys, go and pester Miss Pink or Miss Forcible, or the crazy old man upstairs. No, I don't want to do those things. I want to explore. I don't really mind what you do, as long as you don't make a mess. Coraline went over to the window and watched the rain come down. It wasn't the kind of rain you could go out in. It was rain that meant business, and currently its business was turning the garden into a muddy, wet soup. Coraline had watched all the videos. She was bored with her toys, and she'd read all her books. She turned on the television. She went from channel to channel to channel, but there was nothing on but men in suits talking about the stock market and talk shows. Eventually, she found something to watch. She watched animals, birds and insects, which disguised themselves as leaves or twigs or other animals to escape from things that could hurt them. She enjoyed it, but it ended too soon. It was time to talk to her father. Coraline's father was home. Both of her parents worked, doing things on computers, which meant that they were home a lot of the time. Each of them had their own study. Hello, Coraline. Hmm. It's raining. Yup. It's bucketing down. No. It's just raining. Can I go outside? What does your mother say? She says you're not going out in a weather like that, Coraline Jones. Then, no. But I want to carry on exploring. Then explore the flat. Look, here's a piece of paper and a pen. Count all the doors and windows. List everything blue. Mount an expedition to discover the hot water tank and leave me alone to work. Can I go into the drawing room? The drawing room was where the Joneses kept the expensive and uncomfortable furniture Coraline's grandmother had left them when she died. Coraline wasn't allowed in there. Nobody went in there. It was only for the best. If you don't make a mess and... You don't touch anything. Coraline considered this carefully. Then she took the paper and pen and went off to explore the inside of the flat. She discovered the hot water tank. It was in a cupboard in the kitchen. She counted everything blue, 153. She counted the windows, 21. She counted the doors, 14. Of the doors that she found, 13 opened and closed. The other, the big carved brown wooden door at the far corner of the drawing room was locked. Where does that door go? Nowhere, dear. It has to go somewhere. Look. She reached up and took a string of keys from the top of the kitchen door frame. She sorted through them carefully and selected the oldest, biggest, blackest, rustiest key. They went into the drawing room. She unlocked the door with the key. The door swung open. Her mother was right. The door didn't go anywhere. It opened onto a brick wall. When this place was just one house, that door went somewhere. 
When they turned the house into flats, they simply bricked it up. The other side is the empty flat on the other side of the house, the one that's still for sale. She shut the door. You didn't lock it? Why should I lock it? It doesn't go anywhere. It was nearly dark outside now and the rain was still coming down, pattering against the windows and blurring the lights of the cars in the street outside. Coraline's father stopped working and made them all dinner. Daddy, you've made a recipe again? It's leek and potato stew with a tarragon garnish and melted Gruyere cheese. Coraline sighed. Then she went to the freezer and got out some microwave chips and a microwave mini pizza. You know I don't like recipes. If you tried it, maybe you'd like it. That night, Coraline lay awake in her bed. The rain had stopped and she was almost asleep when something went ta 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 ta, -ta. She sat up in bed. Something went cree. Ah! Coraline got out of bed and looked down the hall but saw nothing strange. She walked down the hall. From her parents' bedroom came a low snoring. That was her father. And an occasional sleeping mutter. That was her mother. Something moved. It was little more than a shadow and it scuttled down the darkened hall fast like a little patch of night. The black shape went into the drawing room and Coraline followed it a little nervously. The room was dark. The only light came from the hall and Coraline, who was standing in the doorway, cast a huge and distorted shadow onto the drawing room carpet. She looked like a thin, giant woman. Coraline was just wondering whether or not she ought to turn on the lights when she saw the black shape edge slowly out from beneath the sofa. It paused and then dashed silently across the carpet toward the farthest corner of the room. There was no furniture in that corner of the room. Coraline turned on the light. There was nothing in the corner. Nothing but the old door that opened onto the brick wall. She was sure that her mother had shut the door, but now it was ever so slightly open. Just a crack. Coraline went over to it and looked in. There was nothing there, just a wall built of red bricks. Coraline closed the old wooden door, turned out the light. Coraline went back to bed. She dreamed of black shapes that slid from place to place, avoiding the light, until they were all gathered together under the moon. Little black shapes with little red eyes and sharp yellow teeth. They started to sing. We are small but we are many, we are many, we are small. We were here before you rose, we will be here when you fall. Their voices were high and whispering and slightly whiny. They made Coraline feel uncomfortable. Then Coraline dreamed a few commercials and after that she dreamed of nothing at all.